my original intention for creating this video was to illustrate how to balance a battery pack containing cells with differing voltages. However, things took an unexpected turn when I attempted to check the voltage of each individual cell using my voltage checker, and it surprisingly re registered zero voltage, failing to identify any of the cells. This was quite a setback and left me in disbelief. To troubleshoot the issue, I decided to employ the B3 charger. Although it is not the ideal balanced charger for this type of task, it typically flashes red if the cells are poorly balanced or if there's a problem with the battery. As you can see in this clip, the charger did indicate a problem. My next step was to use a multimeter to measure the voltage at the battery's discharge port and determine if I could get any readings. Fortunately, the voltage I measured at this point was promising, showing that I was getting an appropriate reading for a 3S battery pack. However, when I examined the individual cells using the charging port, I discovered that while some cells showed readings, others still registered as having zero voltage. This gave me a glimmer of hope that perhaps only one cell might be damaged. I considered the possibility of removing the affected cell and converting the pack to a 2S configuration or finding another solution. Yet this discovery bolstered my confidence to disassemble the entire battery pack to identify the root of the problem. As I was carefully disassembling the battery pack, it reminded me of a previous project involving a battery pack encased in a hard plastic casing which experienced similar issues. Interestingly, that particular project yielded very different results and if you're intrigued, I encourage you to check out that video by clicking the link in the top right corner of your screen. Returning to the current battery pack, I noticed it contained two aluminium plates designed to protect the pack from damage. However, I couldn't help but wonder about the exposed sides of the battery as the aluminium only covered two of the pack sides. Nonetheless, it was a positive step that the aluminium was there as it should offer some level of protection to the lithium batteries housed within. Upon further inspection, I identified where the primary issue originated. One of the wires had come detached and this led to a crucial observation the wire was mistakenly soldered to the aluminium terminal, which does not create a strong bond. This can easily result in wires being pulled loose. The soldering should have been performed on the opposite side where the copper terminal is located. It became clear that there was a valid reason for the distinction between the aluminium and copper connections, which are typically spot welded for added durability. I speculated that the individual responsible for assembling this battery pack might have been fatigued, possibly due to work in a long shift which could have contributed to this error. Initially, I believe only one wire was detached, but upon further investigation, I found a second wire that was also compromised. This revelation indicated that these two faulty connections were in fact the root cause of the issues I encountered in my initial attempts to produce the video as planned. Moving forward, I set about reassembling everything meticulously, ensuring the battery was put back together safely and in line with the manufacturer's specifications. The end result made me proud as I had successfully resolved the issues. With this obstacle behind me, I could finally return to my original objective of balancing each cell within the pack. I used my voltage checker to confirm the readings. The total voltage of all three cells was accurately measured at 10.9 volts, with individual cell voltages reading 3.63 volts for the first cell, 3.67 volts for the second cell, and 3.66 volts for the third cell. The necessity for balancing each cell arises primarily because lower cost chargers often do not do an adequate job in this regard. To address this, I plan to use a USB LiPo charger, which unfortunately can only charge one cell at a time and does so at a relatively slow rate due to low amperage, but this also makes it considerably safer. Additionally, to facilitate this process, I need a jumper wires that feature both male and female connectors. I connected the female end to the USB LiPo charger while being meticulous in identifying the correct wires for positive and negative connections. Failing to do so could result in damaging the charger. In my setup, I designated the orange wire as the positive and the white wire as the negative. 
a detail I needed to remember throughout the process. For consistency and safety, I recommend starting connections from the right side, ensuring the correct polarity is maintained throughout. While the cell is charging, the USB charger provides a red indicator light, which changes to blue when the cell is fully charged. However, the goal of this video isn't solely to fully charge each cell, rather we aim to ensure they all reach the same voltage reading. This means it will be necessary to continuously disconnect the charger and check the voltage to maintain balance among the cells. When preparing to store the battery after balancing, it's crucial to ensure that each cell has the same voltage level, specifically 3.85 volts. So when it's time to charge the next cell, you'll need to follow a specific procedure. Begin by disconnecting the negative wire from the cell currently being charged. Next, take the positive wire and connect it to the port where the negative wire was. After that, relocate the negative wire to the next immediate port to ensure proper connectivity for the next charging cycle. It's crucial to note that this charger is designed exclusively for 1S batteries. It cannot handle 2s or higher battery configurations. As of my latest check, I successfully balanced each cell to 3.84 volts, which is well within the acceptable range for storage. This careful monitoring and adjustment help ensure the longevity and efficiency of the battery system. Thank you all for tuning in. If you found this information helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more updates and tutorials.